Fenton and I'm an aeromodeler and an engineer. Join me on a fascinating journey where I show you some of the techniques used in scale aeromodeling. Welcome again to the workshop modelers. Today we're going to be looking at the airframe and putting on the masking tape ready to apply the red trim. The top of the cowling is red and there's a stripe that runs from the front to the rear. Also the registration marking is all done in the same red as well as a, an Oster Autocrat logo on the fin. So we'll be masking all that off and then I'll be spraying the red. I'm going to use a Tamiya flat red um, because the red's exactly the colour I want. Uh, then I'll go over it with a class coat clear to make it fuel proof. Okay, so without further ado, let's get started. Okay, what I've got set up here is I've got the aircraft levelled and I've got a laser level shining at the aircraft. On the full size, the line, this laser level line, should go through that top cowling line, but it doesn't. So that's a bit of an error. And that's purely down to me and how I've made the cowling. What I need to make sure is that that line passes right in the corner of the door window because I don't want any red to go on the door so it has to end right there. So I think even though it's not correct on the front of the cowl, the rest of it it is correct so I'll just have to accept that I think. So what I'm now going to do is apply tape and when I say tape what I've actually done is taken some Metamark masking film and just cut it into a one centimetre mark wide strip. And I'm going to use that to mask off the area I need. Now it's quite difficult to get this right while still trying to avoid blocking the laser and the camera. Anyway, you get the idea. I've spent an hour or so faffing, faffing around with tape. So what you can see here is the blue tape, which is uh, a masking film. I've cut it to one centimetre wide, and that's going to be the width of the silver line as far back as the, as the cockpit. And actually the red, the top is red, and then the red stops above the door. You've got silver underneath, but don't worry about it. What, what's happening over there. And then underneath that, we have some Tamiya tape. Now, if you're not familiar with this, this is Tamiya tape, and it's a paper masking tape. So it doesn't curve terribly well, but it does curve, and it is the best tape you can get possible on the planet for masking. You won't get any bleed underneath Tamiya tape. Okay, so what I've done is I've used Tamiya tape to form the downward sweep and then the upward sweep around the front section. And then I've set the laser level to be a little bit lower and I've raised the tail slightly. So what I've created is a tapering effect. So you'll see that the width of the, what will be the red band is now getting thinner and thinner as it goes towards the tail. You'll see that there's a gap between the tail end and the, the main section. That's where the registration letters are going to fit. But I've carried the laser line straight through so that it will all remain straight. 
registration letters next, I think. So here you can see we've actually put some of the lettering onto the model. Um, we've already, I've already shown you how we put the Tamiya tape, which is this paper tape underneath, and then we've used the Metamark uh, masking uh, film cut into a centimetre wide strip uh, for that bit. I think possibly what I'll do on the other side is actually use the one centimetre wide paper tape for both of these parts because the Metamark works very well, but it doesn't stay stuck down quite, quite as well. So um, it's great for this sort of thing, for the masks, but for lines and stuff like that, you need a larger area. So, um, so we'll change it on the other side. But as you can see, I've created the letters in Illustrator and then sized them from um, photograph. And then, uh, and then again, using reference points where the stringers are, where the end of the zip is, where the end of the cockpit is and that sort of stuff. I've, I've positioned it accordingly. So hopefully that's right. Talking about the, the film, here's the one for the other side. Um, and this is the, the Metamark, Metamark Sign Vinyl 4 Series. And you're looking for paint mask on their website. Um, delivery is quite high, which makes the material a lot more expensive. You probably pay almost as much for delivery as you do for the material, which is a bit of a shame. So you can get a fair bit all clubbed together with your friends or something. So there we go. What I have done is I've also done a mask for the um, Oster Autocrat logo that is on the fin. So I'll, um, I'll show you a bit more information about that. So for those of you not familiar with it, this is Illustrator. And uh, what I've done is I've drawn all the, uh, the letters and everything, and I've had to draw each one of these um, manually because of uh, the shape. There's no uh, font available on the internet that's really that close to this. So I actually laid down a photograph of the side of the fuselage, you know, as, as, as perfectly as I could, as straight as I could, and then I traced over the top of it using the software. So just to show you what also I did was I played around with the, the Oster Autocrat logo that is on the fin. So I've also created that. Let's have a look at those masks and, and what we do with the, um, the product that comes out of the uh, cutter plotter. So this is basically what we get out of the cutter plotter. Um, and you can see I've there's several on here because uh, I was playing around with the size and what have you and the driver was giving me issues as well on the PC. One of the drivers I've used actually prints the artwork out slightly under size and that's not really very good. So what you do in Illustrator is actually set the size that you want it and that is the size that it cuts which is exactly what you want funnily enough but um, somehow a new driver has got onto my system and it's uh, not behaving. Anyway so this is the process of weeding. I have shown you it before. You can get special tweezers and these are extremely sharp um, and also the edges are a bit awkward so I put tape on to try and save my fingers because if you do an hour of weeding um, it can really make your fingers quite sore. So what I propose is I'm just going to do a bit of weeding on this um, and then we'll um, we'll leave it at that because it's pretty boring. In fact I'm not sure you can see what's going on so I'm going to switch to another camera view. I'm just going to put a ruler across the bottom to hold it still straight. So you can see what's going on. And I'm also already regretting that little tiny piece there, which has moved, of course, of course it has. So looking at this one, I can see where that was meant to go. And it should be there. I 
probably looking at just about the limit of what the what the cutter can deal with. Some of the bits and pieces on this are very, very tiny and very fine. I think you get the idea. There are some settings you've got to clown around with to get it to cut cleanly, um, but it's not it's not too difficult. The, the main problem is that the software I'm using is quite old um, and it does mean I can't really update my PC to newer software because all of the drivers will stop working. So I've got to be very careful of that. See this piece was actually oops one long bit in the middle of that A does not want to stay put. And where's it gone? There it's gone. And there we have it, well, more or less. You think that bit's fiddly. <laughs> the, the word Oster above it is even worse. I'm just going to centre this, this bit back in the middle. Now what we use over the top of this is what's called a transfer tape. And the transfer tape holds all these missing, these floaters in position while you put it on the model and then you peel the transfer tape off and it positions it exactly where you want it. So there we have the weeded mask. And what we do is we just cut around that in a rectangle, put the transfer tape on, and then apply that to the model. I'll give it a go, see if we can get away with getting that A onto the model. So this is applying the transfer tape. really cutting it to size and then all I need to do is so there we have our artwork and it's important that you burnish it down onto the transfer tape because you're going to lift this transfer tape off and remove the backing okay so the job of the transfer tape is to keep all the artwork together. Okay, so as I lift it, you'll see I'm actually lifting everything off. The A, which was a problem, has come off. So has the O. So has that horrible little shape there. At the top, the R is away. Let's hope that little A, the triangle in the middle of the A comes up too, and it has. So there you see, we now have the artwork on transfer tape on that. So if we go over to the model, we'll apply this to the model and see if we can get that little triangle in the A to work. So this is the area that the um, artwork is going to go. Just going to reference the drawing again. So the word Oster is more or less in the centre, but just under that rib tape there. So I think we're probably going to be safe about there. Okay, 
then what we do is we have to really burnish it down because we now want the blue mask to stick to the rudder uh, to the fin and when we lift this off we want the blue to remain and very importantly we want that triangle that's in the middle of the A to stick to the model so here we go this is the transfer tape now being removed back from the blue so the R has stayed the A at the bottom on the autocrat has stayed and I was going to say that A has stayed but it hasn't it's lifting every time Sometimes if you fold it right back on itself, you can get it to work. There. Not perfect. And then we keep peeling. And what we're hoping for is that things like the O stay put, that A. There's a tiny little piece underneath this little loop and make sure that stays on the model and it has. I think we're good to go. Now, really, I probably shouldn't touch this, but I've got to. That A has got to come down a bit. And I think we're probably as good as we're going to get there. It probably should have been over another three or four millimetres because the Oster's not in the middle, but it's close. And there we go. Just to reinforce the transfer tape idea, and you'll see I've used transfer tape on this main settering, um, this lettering here. The only area that I was concerned about was the middle of the A again. So the whole transfer tape is there simply for this. But what it also does is it keeps these, if you imagine just the blue shape here, it's on a little stalk and it can move. So the transfer tape keeps it all still and doesn't let it all wobble around. So this one should be fairly straightforward. You have to keep an eye on that bit of the X just in case it wants to lift and it hasn't. Keep your eye on that A. We want the middle of the A to stay put, which it has. And I don't think there's any dodgy areas anymore. I think that is it. So now the transfer takes off. The mask can do its job. Now just before I spray, I go over all of this around the edges because where it's going over the pink tapes, it's almost inevitable that you're going to get a run. So what I do when I spray, in this case red, is I'll spray a very light mist coat. And what that does is it sits in the joint between the mask and the paint and sort of seals the edge a little bit. Give it a minute to just flash off and then go on with a bit more paint and uh, you shouldn't get so many runs. But I can see here we've gone right the way through the pink tape. So if we don't end up with a sawtooth effect in the paint, I'll be very surprised. Anyway, there we go. Okay, and here we are on the port side. And I've positioned the lettering, same as we did on the other side, except this time I've used the um, Tamiya tape, one centimetre wide Tamiya tape, for both lines. Um, it just um, sticks down better. Anyway, the lettering has now gone on on this side. So all I'm going to do now is burnish it down, make sure it's well stuck and we'll take the transfer tape off. This A we've got to watch carefully but it doesn't want to 
lift, see that corner, try to lift, but it's really not too big a problem. See the very sharp angle that I've got the, uh, the tape folded back at? That's just to avoid any catching that we might get. It's also a very good idea when you're removing masking tape after you've painted to do the same. Hold it at a very acute angle uh, to get it to, um, to come off without lifting the paint. I also, and you'll see it later, I also like to lift the masking while the paint is still slightly damp or actually still very wet. As soon as it's sprayed, I'll, I'll pull the tape off um, because I, I don't like the edges to go hard and dry. Otherwise, when you peel the tape off, you can take flakes of paint off. So I like to peel the masking tape off while it's still wet or at least still soft. Now we've got the challenge of fitting the Ostautocrat sticker on this side. You notice I managed to get the A to stay put. Well, it didn't, it moved, but I got it in the end. So we've got to take the transfer tape off. Not the transfer tape, sorry, the, the backing off. And everything so far has come up with it. There are no missing letters. So that's halfway there. Make sure the area is dust free, fairly clean. So we're going to put it in the middle of that section there. Preferably straight. That's always an option, but uh, do my best to get it straight. So there we have the paint mask down. Now we have to really burnish it, especially around that Osta logo, which is pretty tiny. I'm just burnishing it with the back of my nail. Make sure it's sticking down to the glass coat really well. Now is that oh, it's too late now? Not strictly speaking perfectly straight there. Slightly crooked. Right. So if you remember what we have to do is make sure we peel it at an angle. And we really want that A to stay. And as you see, it did. So the next problem one is that R. And that's worked as well. The A has stayed in Autocrat. The next problem is the O in Autocrat. Now remember that little tiny half moon shape that's actually stayed as well so that's a case of good burnishing has, has, has um, worked wonders you probably do this as a decal to be perfectly honest but I don't like decals they always leave an edge around the around the the surface um, even if you use uh, soul set and what's whatever they're called um, you know the uh, decal solvents it still leaves a bit of a mark. So we're almost to that point where I've got to start masking the rest of the model off because obviously you can't just spray this bit because you'll get over spray all around here. So what you end up doing is, is putting masks around the area that you're spraying.
ordinarily I'd like to take this masking tape off immediately but I've had some fun with the gun. You can see the overspray so you do have to be really careful. You may think you're only doing this area but it will go everywhere. You have got to be careful. And to me this is the, uh, the best bit of spraying, seeing what we've achieved. Unveiling it as it were. Hoping that you haven't got any creep underneath the tape. There you can see there's creep underneath the paper that's surrounding it, but we're not worried about that. That's nothing to do with masking the surface off. So now we can peel this bit off, and with any luck, we won't get any creep underneath. So remember, peel it back at a sharp angle. And if your day is lucky, you'll end up with lovely sharp edges. Now this is where it can get fun and you've got to let it tear the mask because you can't really lift that bit of the G just yet. Well, let me see if I've got a scalp I have. So all I'm going to do is lift the mask and just cut through it. Like that. There may be other areas that we have to do something similar to, but the G is a particularly bad one. Remember, keep the angles. Tiny little bit of creep there. This X is going to be another troublesome piece. And I'm going to cut this because I don't like it. Um... Now, if you imagine if this was wet paint, which is normally the case, then it can get very messy and you must not let the mask touch the surface because it's wet paint. With this, with me using a matte acrylic, it dries very, very quick. Now we can get rid of these troublesome bits. You've got to be very careful, especially if the paint is wet, because you do not want to damage the paint and you do not want to damage the underlying surface either. How therapeutic is that, eh? Magic. You can see we got a very slight blur there, bleed, and a tiny little bleed there. Not enough to worry about, I'm not going to touch that, I'm just going to leave that as is. And then we'll overcoat this with a, with a coat of gloss. The moment of truth. Now all I'm taking off at this point is all the excessive masking that we put on just to take care of any overspray.
Again, we're hoping for a very clean line. So far, we'll attempt fate. But so far, it's looking good. That looks like it might be a problem area where there was a rivet, simulated rivet, right where the paint was. Oh, look at that. Perfect. That shows you how good the Tamiya tape is. It's worth its weight in gold. Look at that. Straight over rivets. People say, how on earth do you manage to uh, avoid creep? Well, the trick is you use tell me to take. Again, come right over the pinked edge of the tape and not a bit of creep. And you really can't complain about that. So let's see what we get with the registration on this side. If you remember the G was particularly difficult. I'm going to preempt that this time. by going at it this way. See all the rib tapes and no bleed under any of it. This is the Metamark paint mask material. It's quite expensive. As you can see, I have to do a huge amount of work to make it give this sort of finish. Tiny, tiny bit of bleed there. Again, I'm not going to do anything about that. It doesn't justify any work. It's a big pile of mess here. This is the bit I hate I'm trying to stab the edge without marking the paint. And there we have gags up. Let's get this last bit of tape off the tail. See how fine this ended up as. And there we have the very fine line at the end. Now the part that I'm sure you've all been waiting for. No, I have.
almost need a magnifying glass to see what's going on here. And do you remember that horrible little triangle in the middle of the A? There it is. A little bit of scratching around here when I was trying to find the edge. And there we go. I must confess this is not the best spray job I've ever done. The silver went on okay, but not brilliant. Lots of uh, dust particles, well not dust, but um, I think I overspray. I don't know whether I've got to have another look at pressures and things like that. I mean, it, it'll suffice. This is a flying only and you know, it's just a, a fun model. But um, as I've used it as a, as a test bed for a lot of ideas and stuff, to suddenly find that my spraying has gone a bit awry is a little bit worrying. So um, anyway, I'll look at that and that's what this is all about, isn't it? A bit of experimenting. So what you're gonna, what we're gonna do now is the bit I love. We're gonna take the cockpit masking off. It's been on for some time, so I'm not sure how it's going to go, but let's proceed. The red has stayed outside. Well, that's looking pretty good, but I shouldn't really say anything. Some silver starting to show there. This is what you can find when uh, When the paint has been left to dry a little bit, the silver is cracking a little bit, is it coming off. Well, there we have it. The painting is more or less done. 
So we've just got some fine detailing to do and, uh, and then we're, this project is a wrap. If you've enjoyed it please click subscribe and like and I'll post another video next week when we add the final touches and the bits more detail. I've got some wheel covers to make for example. Bye for now.